So now let's learn of a very interesting concept called the rank of a matrix. Very interesting concept, right? Again, rank of a matrix is a very important concept to solve a system of linear equations, which we'll learn of very soon in this course, right? So one of the biggest applications of rank of a matrix is to solve a system of linear equations, right? So, but before we go to go, go and see how rank is useful here, let's understand what rank is and some of its properties, right? So rank is often written as rank of A. Sometimes in some textbooks, you might also read it as RK of A. Sometimes the parentheses are also not written. It is just written as rank A, right? So this is how you represent rank A. But what does it intuitively mean? Okay, let me give you an example from a geometric standpoint. Imagine I have a 2 cross 2 matrix. Okay, I'll start with, again, rank of a matrix is defined even for non-square matrices. So, rank of a matrix is defined for any rectangular matrix, not necessarily square matrices, but let me give you a simple explanation using square matrices. Okay, so I'll try to give you a geometric interpretation. Okay, then we'll go into the numeric interpretation and multiple interpretation of rank itself, right? So, if this is my transformation matrix, if this, if this matrix A represents a linear transformation, then this is where my i hat lands, right? This is where my i hat lands, right? And this is where my j hat lands, right? From the concept of simple linear transforms. If you try to imagine this geometrically, how does it look? Look at this. This is my, this is my x axis and this is my y axis. Now, my i hat was initially here right? My i hat is initially here. My j hat is initially here. But after the transformation, look at what happens after the transformation, right? After the transformation, my i hat lands at 1 minus 1, okay, which is roughly here, right? 1 minus 1. So, this is where my i1 hat is, okay? This is where my, so let's call this as i1 hat, as we have typically called throughout this course, right? Let's call this as j1 hat. So, I1 hat lands here. Where would J1 hat land? If you notice, J1 hat also lands here, right? Now, if you notice, if you notice, both I1 hat and J1 hat are on the same line. If, if you try to draw a line here, right? If, if you try to draw a line here, your I1 hat and J1 hat are lying in the same line or lying on the same line, okay? So, now what happens is, if you have any vector V, any two cross, any two dimensional vector, okay, any two dimensional vector, okay. Of course, you can represent it as a column vector to be more precise, right. So, if you have, if you have any, any two dimensional vector here, right, two rows and one column, A is a two cross two matrix transformation. Let's assume we obtain U, okay, U is going to be a two dimensional vector. Now, because A is represented by these two ve column vectors, say this is a column vector, right. Let's call it as C1. Let's call this column as C2. Because this is where I hat lands and this is where J hat lands. Any vector, take any vector, take any vector, take any vector V. Sorry. Take any vector V in this 2D space. Okay. So, take any vector in this 2D space. Right. That vector after the linear transformation would lie on this line itself. As it is shown, right. Because I hat and J hat lands here. That there are a couple of things that are going to happen because I had and J hat lands here, right? The debt of A equals to zero because the area of the parallelogram that is built using I hat one and J hat one equals to zero. So the first property. Second, your I hat one. Notice that your I hat one and J hat one are linearly dependent. Okay, we have talked about all these geometric interpretations earlier, right? When we learned about the determinant and we learned about linear independence, right? So, your I hat, I1 hat and J1 hat are linearly dependent because they're lying on the same line, right? And that's very easy to see. I can write my column 1, I can write my column 1 as column 2 divided by 2 or I can write 2 times column 1 equals to column 2, right? I can write it this way. Hence, I1 hat and J1 hat are linearly dependent, okay? So, now what happens? Now, whenever you have this situation, whenever you have a situation like this, Okay, so now how is this? So this situation I hope is clear, right? If I have a matrix A, which now spans, okay, look at this. So let me connect the concept of rank to the concept of span. We have already discussed span of two vectors. Suppose I have these two vectors, i hat and j hat. Where do they span? They span the whole 2D space. 
because any because any vector in this 2d space can be represented as a linear combination of i hat and j hat right but what is the span of i1 hat and j1 hat the span of i1 hat and j1 hat because they are linearly dependent is only this line right so one way to define rank geometrically is the rank is one way to 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 define rank is rank of a matrix a is the dimension rank it, it's a dimension of the vector space if the it's a dimension of the space right spanned by spanned by the columns spanned by the columns spanned by the column vectors to be more precise okay spanned by the column vectors of a right now if you look at the column vectors of a column 1 and column 2 right since they both are linearly dependent what is their span which all vectors can they represent they can only represent all of the vectors which lie on this line they can't represent vector v okay because because i hat and j sorry i1 hat and j1 hat are linearly dependent right so we have, we have discussed some of this so rank of a is defined as the dimension of the vector space spanned by the columns of a now the columns of a span a one dimensional space because it's a line right it's not a 2d space hence the rank of a in this case hence the rank of a is equal to 1 and not 2 okay i hope this is clear this is one way of understanding rank of a matrix okay now let's 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 look at another example right so imagine if i have a matrix a okay a 3 cross 3 matrix right i have 1 minus 2 and 3 this is my column 1 let's call it as column 1 my column 2 is let's say 0 minus 3 and 3 I have column 3 again, which is 1, 1 and 0. So, what is the geometric interpretation of this? This is where my i hat lands or let's call it i1 hat. Let's call this as j1 hat and let's call this as k1 hat. Okay. So, this is another way of thinking about it, right? Now, now if the span, now look at the span of i1 hat, j1 hat and k1 hat, right? So if so, it also tells me. So one way to think about rank, another way to think about rank, okay, another way to think about rank of a matrix is, it is the maximum number of, it is the maximum number of linearly independent columns. It is a maximum number of linearly independent columns, linearly independent columns of A. This is another way to imagine rank of A. Now look at this. Uh, which, how many of these columns are linearly independent, right? If you can compute the linear independence, and we know what linear independence is, right? So if I have a column, if I can represent it as some linear combination of other columns, if you can write it as a1 column 1 plus a2 column 2 plus a3 column 3, okay? Then column 1 is not dependent. So sorry, sorry, I, I should not write a1 c1. Okay, so if I can write C1 as a linear combination of C2 and C3, then C1 is linearly dependent on C2 and C3. Okay, so we have seen what linear independence is. Again, all, both these formulas are the similar, are, are exactly the same, right? The the two formulas that I've written, right? Rank of A is the dimensionality. What is this definition? Rank of A is the dimensionality of the vector space spanned by the columns of A. This is exactly same as the maximum number of linearly independent columns, right? Both of them geometrically thinking. Again, this span concept comes from geometry, right? This is again a concept of, again, linearly independent columns can be imagined both algebraically like this, right? Because this is what linear dependence means, right? So you can imagine them algebraically as well as geometrically, okay? So these are two ways, these are two definitions or two ways of understanding rank. There is a third very interesting numerical way. There is a third very interesting numerical way of understanding rank. Again, rank is such a fundamental concept with tons of applications, especially to solve system of linear equations, that it has multiple interpretations. And all of these interpretations are one and the same. Another way to think about it is, if you have a, if you have a square matrix, imagine if you have, again, this definition holds only for square matrices, but we'll also see for rectangular matrices how everything pans out, right? So, if you have a square matrix and if the determinant of A equals to 0, let's assume you have a square matrix which is n cross n. If the determinant of it is equal to 0, this implies that the rank is not equal to n. It is less than n. 
basically the rank nerve is going to be the rank nerve is going to be less than n so if you're given a square matrix let's assume you're given a square matrix like this right so let's take this matrix just for simplicity okay minus 2 minus 3 1 3 3 0 okay if you're given a square matrix like this first you can compute its debt if its debt is not equal to 0 if debt of a is not equal to 0 then you can then this implies that rank of a that rank of a equals to n which in this case is equal to 3 first thing if debt of a equals to 0 Okay, next case, if debt of A equals to 0, then look at a sub matrix. Okay, so for example, this is a sub, this is a 2 cross 2 sub matrix, right? Similarly, this is a 2 cross 2 sub matrix. Similarly, this is a 2 cross 2 sub matrix. So, de if debt of A equals to 0, then you can write the rank of A, then you can write the rank of A as the size of the largest, it is the size of, or it is the rank of, the largest sub matrix it is a large it is the size of the largest sub matrix with non zero determinant with non zero determinant this is an other way to imagine rank again this definition is purely numerical okay so in this definition what are we saying if debt of a is not equal to 0 then the rank is equal to 3 and this makes sense right there is a there is a geometric way also of understanding this if debt of A is not equal to 0, which means, what does this mean geometrically? What does this mean geometrically? It means the volume of the parallel pipette, okay, is non-zero. The volume of the parallel pipette is non-zero. What does this imply? Since the volume of the parallel pipette is non-zero, your I1 hat, J1 hat, K1 hat are not linearly dependent. They are not linearly dependent, which means the rank is going to be equal to 3. Okay, again, there is a way to, because determinant itself has a geometric interpretation, we can connect that geometric interpretation, which is the volume of the parallel pipette, to linear independence. Okay, next, if determinant of A equals to 0, then rank of A is the size of the largest submatrix. Okay, so largest submatrix with a non-zero determinant. Okay, again, we have seen three ways of defining rank. One, one way is to think about it from the perspective of span. The other way is to think about it as a maximum number of linearly independent columns. The third way to think about it is from a numerical standpoint, which is the size of the largest submatrix with non-zero determinant. Right? I, ho I hope this is clear. Again, th there, is, there is an interesting concept here called the column rank and the row rank. Okay? So, till now what we have been discussing is called the column rank. Okay? Because we have, if you notice, everything that we have been thinking of till now is based on these columns. Right? So, column rank is what we have been discussing about. Similarly, we can also define a concept called a row rank. Right? In the, con in the case of a row rank, instead of, so in, the, in this case, we, are, we, are, we have defined everything with respect to columns. In the case of a row rank, you will define everything with respect to the rows of the matrix. Right? So, for example, let me give you an example, very simple example. So, the, row, the column rank of A is the dimension of the vector space spanned by column vectors of A. Similarly, the row rank of A is the, is the dimension of the vector space spanned by the row vectors of A. Okay, so that's what it is. Okay, again, there is a very, very important property in, in whole of linear algebra. There is a very interesting, uh, where there's a very interesting property which says that the column rank, which says that the column rank of a matrix, the column rank of A is same as the row rank. The column rank is same as the row rank of a matrix and hence we just call it as rank of A. Right? Because the column rank is same as row rank, there is a very interesting property that we can get here. Okay? What does this mean? This means rank of A is same as rank of A transpose. Right? Because column rank is same, because of this property, again this is a very very important property. This is a very very important property in whole of linear algebra. Okay, and because column rank of A is same as row rank of A, we just call it as rank of A. And because of this equality, we can also derive or we can also arrive at this conclusion that rank of A is same as rank of A transpose. Okay, so let's let's look at an example, right? Let's look at a non-square matrix now. Okay, because we have not seen it. So let's take a matrix A now. This matrix A is let's say 1, 1, 0, 2. Okay, the second row is let's say minus 1 minus 1, 0, minus 2. Okay. So, this is my row 1, right, and this is my row 2. 
okay this is my column one this is my column two my column three and column four now if you notice if you notice there's a very simple equation here your row one is equal to minus one times row two which means row one and row two again look at this this is two cross four matrix two rows and four columns right so your row one and row two are not linearly independent because I can represent row one as some constant times row two, right? So what is the rank of this matrix? Now the rank of this matrix is going to be equal to one, not equal to two. Let's look at it. Look at the number of rows that I have. I have only two rows, right? Which means the maximum rank can be two. Even though I have four columns, since I have only two rows, right? Again, there's a very interesting property, which we'll come to later. If you have an M cross N matrix, right? The rank of this matrix, the rank of this matrix A, is is less than equal to the minimum value the minimum value of m comma n right and this comes because the row because the row rank and column rank are always going to be equal okay so now since we have only two rows right and row one is linearly dependent on row two hence the rank of this matrix is one again you can also argue the same thing from column from column vectors perspective look at this this column vector and this column vector are the same right this column vector multiplied by zero will give you this column vector this column vector multiplied or this minus this to be more precise this minus this gives you c3 right so now this multiplied by two will give you this which means all of them are linearly dependent just on one column vector which is c1 right hence the column rank is also equal to one just like the row rank is equal to one okay i just wanted to show you an example of a rectangular matrix now all this is good but every time computing how many vectors are linearly dependent is slightly tedious, right? So the next question here is how do we compute the rank of a matrix? Okay, again, the rank of the matrix is a super important, is a super important concept as far as solving linear system of equations is concerned, which we'll check out little uh, in, in one of the in one of the next couple of videos, right? So how do you compute the rank of a matrix now? Is there a simpler way to do it? Okay. So the first property that we have to know of is that elementary row operations. Okay, we have talked about elementary row operations, right? So we have already talked about it in one of the previous videos. Elementary row operations do not change the rank. Do not change the rank. Right? And what are the elementary row transforms? If you recall, swapping two rows is an elementary row transform. Row i swapped with row j. Okay, this is this is one. The second one is row i. If if it is changed to some constant times row i. Okay, where c is not equal to zero. This is also an elementary row operation. There is a third elementary row operation, which is I can write row i as row i plus some k times row j. Okay, this is this is the third elementary operation. The very important property of rank is. That elementary row operations do not change the rank. Now we'll try and leverage this to compute rank using an algorithm called as Gauss elimination. Okay, it's also called as Gauss Jordan elimination in some textbooks. So it's a very, very simple algorithm called as Gauss elimination. Computer science students, especially when I was a student myself, we used to implement Gauss elimination in C programming language as an exercise, right? So it's a very simple algorithm, nothing very fancy. Let me take an example and solve it for you. Okay. So let's assume I have this matrix. Okay. One, three, one, nine. I'll show it, show it to you step by step. One, one, minus one and one. Three, eleven, five and thirty-five. Okay. This is my matrix. This is a three cross four matrix. Okay. First, I will transform this matrix as follows. Let's look at the first row. Okay. I'll start with the first row. Except for the, so, so I'll start with the first column. I'll start with the first column. What I'll try to do here is, except for the first row, I'll try to make this equal to zero and I'll also try to make this equal to zero. Okay, look at this. If you look at this, this is the triangular part, right? If you look at this, 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 and everything above it is triangular. Everything below that, right? Everything above that is upper triangular part. Okay, so I'm taking this. So if I have this, see, sim simply speaking, Take the first column, except for the first row, take every other row. We try to zero out these two. How can I zero out this? Let's see. How can I zero out this? If I write, this is my row one, 
this is my row 2, this is my row 3. By the way, just like elementary row operations do not change the rank, elementary column operations also do not change the rank. Okay. But anyway, let's let's stick, let's just stick to row operations now. Okay, because it's easier as part of Gauss elimination. Now, if I want to make this zero, what do I do? Can I say R2 as R2 minus R1? Look at this, look at what I'm doing. I'm saying R, see, because I want to make this zero, right? If I subtract this from this, I'll get zero, right? So now what happens if I, if I perform this operation? My R1 does not change. My R1 stays the same. My R2, I'm saying, is R2 minus R1. So this minus this. 1 minus 1, 0. 1 minus 3, minus 2. Okay? Minus 2. This minus this, minus 2. This minus this, minus 8. Okay? So I've done this. So this value became 0 as I wanted it. Next, I want to make this value 0. Look at this. Except for the first row, every other row value, I want to make them 0 through simple linear, through simple row operations. Okay, if I want to make this 0, what can I do? Can I write it as R3 as R3 minus 3 times R1? Very simple, right? This is 3, this is 1. Okay, this is 3, this is 1. I want to make this equal to 0. How do I do it? I'll just take this. I'll take 3 times this and subtract with this. So now what happens now? 3 minus 1 into 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. 11 minus 3 into 3 is 9. So this will become 2. Right? 5 minus 3. Right? 5 minus 3 is 2. 35 minus 3 into 9 is 27, which will make it 8. So we have converted these two into zeros. Very good. Okay. The next step. In the next step, I'll go to column 2. So my column 1 is done. I'll go to column 2. Now, if you notice, column 1 has two zeros. So, for column 2, I want to make this zero. Okay. If I want to make this zero, what do I do? I can, let's look at what operations I can perform to make this zero. To make this zero now, what row operation can I make? Can I write it as row 3 equals to row 3 minus, sorry, row 3 plus row 2. Okay. If I make row 3, if I make row 3 as row 3 plus row 2. 2 plus minus 2 will become 0. So now what happens? My first row stays the same. My second row also stays the same. What happens to my third row? This minus this is 0. This plus this. This plus this is 0. This plus this is 0. This plus this is 0. Okay. So my column 2 is also over. My column 1 is over. My column 2 is over. Now let's come to column 3. Okay. Again, so if you notice, these two have been made 0. This one has been made zero. So I don't, I don't have to make any, I don't have to do any more transformations now. I don't have to make any more row transformations. The only thing that I have to observe now is look at the number of, look at the number of non-zero rows. If you notice this whole row is zero. So ignore this. Is this whole zero? No. Is this whole row zero? No. This is a non-zero row. So this is also a non-zero row. The number of non-zero rows for this matrix equals to 2, which is equal to the rank of this matrix. That's all. That's all there is. Again, by the way, this form of writing a matrix or this, 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 this form of a matrix is called the echelon form. Okay. So this is called as the echelon form. Sorry, not echi. It's, it's called the echelon form of a matrix. Okay. I get confused between echelon and echelon. Okay, so this is called the Eclion form of a matrix. I'll define what Eclion form is in a little while. Okay, but just wanted to introduce a term that matrices which are of this type are called Eclion form. And this whole process, Gauss elimination, what it tries to do here is, given a matrix A, it tries to convert it into Eclion form and count the number of non-zero rows. And the whole conversion only uses the elementary row operations which are valid. Okay, so let me tell you what is, so let me tell you what is an Eclion form. Okay, so an Eclion form has two, so any matrix which follows these two properties is said to be in is said to be in Eclion form. The first one is, again, you have to be careful when we write this, the number of, the number of zeros, right, before, the number of zeros before the first non-zero number before the first non-zero number, okay, the number of zeros before the first non-zero number in any row, 
in any row is less than is less than the number of such zeros is less than the number of again i'll explain this with with an example number of such zeros right in the next row in the next row okay let let me explain what this means there is a second property which is all zero rows so zero rows must be below non zero rows zero rows must be below must be below non zero rows okay so let's see let's let's see this from the perspective of this matrix so zero row this zero row is below so let me actually write this whole matrix here let me rewrite the matrix here okay what matrix did we have 1 3 1 and 9 0 2 2 8 and then 0 0 0 0 so look at this the zero eighth row look at this the zero eighth row is below all non zero rows so it satisfies this condition next the number of zeros before the first non zero number how many look at look at this row okay how many zeros are there before the first non zero number this is the first non zero number right how many how many zeros are there there is one zero okay now look at any row look at any row below this row if you look at this row how many zeros are there before the first non zero row sir before the first non zero number how many numbers are there here there is no number right so four so this one should always be less than four that's what the first statement says for example let's take another example right suppose i have 1 2 1 0 1 i'm just writing this up 0 1 2 let's say i have this matrix now okay if you notice for this row how many zeros are there the number of zeros before the first non zero number before the first non zero number i have only one no, one zero right now let's look at the row below that okay this is the next row right in this next row how many zeros are there before the first non zero number two rows right because one is less than two this is said to be in eclion form on the other hand let's look at this 1 2 1 0 0 2 0 1 1 how many zeros are there before the first non zero element two zeros how many zeros are there before the first first non zero element only one so this is not in eclion form okay so what we are trying to do through gauss elimination is to convert the matrix into its eclion form through basic or through elementary row operations and then finally we count the number of non zero rows very very simple very very elegant algorithm again if you are a computer science student or for if you are a student who knows any programming language it's a good exercise to actually implement gauss elimination itself okay so so we have understood what is what is the meaning of rank we have understood multiple interpretations of rank from a from from a we have seen from a span perspective we have seen from linear independence perspective we have also seen from a numerical standpoint as the size of the largest sub matrix with non zero determinants we have also seen how to compute rank using gauss elimination now the next very interesting thing is the properties of rank itself let's write a bunch of very important properties of rank Okay the first one that we have already seen rank of a is less than equal to the minimum value of m comma n if a matrix itself is an m cross n matrix okay very simple property nothing very fancy here okay the second property here is only zero matrices only zero matrices okay whole zero okay have have rank equals to zero only zero matrices have rank equals to zero number 2 number 3 is there is something called as a full rank matrix okay full rank matrix okay or let's call it full row rank imagine if i have a matrix which is m cross n um, that matrix is said to be full row rank if its rank if its rank is equal to the number of rows which is equal to m similarly a matrix is said to be full column rank a matrix is said to be full column rank if the rank of the matrix equals to the number of columns if a is a square matrix if a is a square matrix of n cross n this matrix is said to be full rank this matrix is said to be full rank if rank is equal to n okay so the term full rank is often used to represent 
that the rank of this square matrix is equal to the size of the matrix itself. Okay, it's a very commonly used term. Okay, so the fourth important concept is this is again a very simple thing. If A is a square matrix, if A is a square matrix and it is invertible, this matrix is invertible, this matrix is invertible if and only if. We write if and only if in short as I double F. If and only if rank of A, rank of A equals to N. Right? And why is this true? Because when rank of A equals to N, see, when what does it mean? When rank of A equals to N, we know the debt of A, right? We know the debt of A is not equal to 0. If debt of A is not equal to 0, we know that A is invertible. If rank of A, look at this the other way, if rank of A is less than N, what does this mean? This means debt of A is equal to 0, which means, which implies that A is not invertible. Right, which means A is not invertible. I hope I hope you got this concept, right? Again, this is very simple stuff. Okay, so now let's go to the next concept or the next property. Very simple properties again. So what it says here is rank of the product of two matrices. If I have two matrices A and B, which I can, whose product is valid, then rank of AB is less than equal to the minimum of, the minimum of rank A and rank B. It is a minimum of rank A and rank B. Okay, very interesting concept. Similarly, so since we're talking about product, we should also talk about the addition, right? Rank of A plus B, rank of A plus B, right? Okay, so rank of A plus B is less than equal to rank of A plus rank of B, is less than equal to rank of A plus rank of B. There is actually a special formula here, which is very interesting. Uh, if I recall well, this is called Sylvester's. Uh, this is called Sylvester Sylvester's rank inequality. Okay, so what this says here, this is a slightly more intricate form of rank of A plus B. Oh, sorry, rank of A plus rank of B. Sorry, it's a, it's a more intricate form of rank AB. Sorry. So what it says is this. Let me write the formula itself. It says rank of A plus rank of B. Right minus n minus n is less than equal to rank of a into b okay so this is a more more intricate form more intricate inequality as compared to 5 here okay so what is it saying it's saying rank of the product of a and b is greater than equal to rank of a plus rank of b minus n okay so i hope this is clear now uh, there is there is another interesting property which is rank of A transpose A, rank of A transpose A is equal to rank of A into A transpose, right, which is equal to rank of A, which is equal to rank of A, which is equal to rank of A transpose. Okay, so this is a very important property. Rank of A transpose A is same as rank of A A transpose, which is equal to rank of A, which is equal to rank of A transpose. Okay, this is a very, very important property. Now, let's look at a couple of very, very simple examples, right? So, let's assume I'm given this matrix, okay? Let's assume I'm given this matrix. Let's say 1, 1, minus 1. Let's take, let's solve a couple of simple problems, right? So, let's solve a couple of very simple problems so that this concept of rank is, and especially Gaussian elimination or Gauss elimination is clear in your head, right? So, let's assume I have a matrix like this, 3, minus 2, 3. Let's assume I also have another matrix which is Q. Okay. Minus 1, minus 12, 1, 6, 12, 6, 5, 10, 5. Okay. Now the question here is what is the rank of P plus Q? The question here is what is the rank of P plus Q? Now let's first compute P plus Q. What is P plus Q? If I just simply add them, right? Element wise, 1 plus minus 1 is 0, 1 plus minus 12, right? Sorry. Sorry, this is 2, not 12. Sorry, my bad. Sorry, this is minus 2. Let me write it properly. This is minus 2. Let me check the numbers. Minus 1, minus 2, 1, 6, 12, 6, 5, 10, 5. Yeah. So, now if I add these two matrices, what do I get? Minus 1, minus 2, 8, 9, 8, 9, yes. 10, 8, 8, 8. Okay, this is what I get. Now, I want to compute the rank of this matrix. Now, how do I do it? Okay, let's start doing it. It's a, it's a very simple thing. First, I'll try to make this equal to 0. 
okay so if i try to make this equals to 0 what can i do i can do i can basically perform row 2 as row 2 minus row 3 okay row 2 minus row 3 what happens now if i perform row 2 minus row 3 i'll get 0 minus 1 minus 2 this will become 0 this will become 1 this will become 2 right row 2 this minus this right yeah this minus this is 2 then i have 8 8 8 okay but now i can also perform the swapping operation if you recall if you recall the swapping operation now what to convert this into echelon form right i'll make i'll make row 3 as row 1 i'll i'll swap these two rows i'll swap this row and this row i can swap it right so because i want to get into the echelon form so 8 8 8 uh, 0 1 2 now here this is this is looking good 0 minus 1 minus 2 so the first row this is non zero everything else is zero now i have want to make this zero to make this zero i'll just add these two right so if i add these two what happens zero plus zero is zero this will become zero this will also become zero okay now how many non zero rows are there there are only two non zero rows so what is the rank of p plus q it is equal to 2 that's it see it's very very quick to uh, to convert things to echelon form uh, uh, echelon form sorry uh, so it's very simple to do it using gauss elimination okay so let's just solve one more simple question so that you you have conceptual clarity right so imagine i have a imagine i have a matrix like this this is a 4 cross 4 matrix okay imagine i have a 4 cross 4 matrix like this 4 3 2 1 3 12 24 21 okay so now what is what is the rank of this matrix okay so let's 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 actually start solving it again let's keep the 1 4 8 7 at the top right now i want to make the rest of them equal to zero right so what i'll first do here is first let's swap these two first let's simply swap these two right so what do i get now in the third row i get zero zero three zero i'll show you how to do it very fast my second row is still here right my second row is still here four two three one because anyway i need two zeros here right then i have three twelve twenty four twenty one okay now i want to make this zero how do i make this zero this into four minus this right very simple right so i'll make i'll multiply 4 with this right and i'll subtract this so 4 into 1 is 4 minus 4 is 0 so this becomes 0 okay let me change the color here so this becomes 0 4 into 4 is 16 16 minus 2 is 14 right 4 into 8 is 32 32 minus 3 is 29 4 into 7 is 28 minus 1 27 so this has become 0 this has become 0 this is already 0 now i have to make this 0 okay if i have to make this 0 3 into 1 minus this right so what happens this becomes 0 okay 4 3 is a 12 12 minus 12 0 8 3 is a 24 0 so this is also 0 okay now what do we have now i'm in echelon form 3 2 right now i'm already in echelon form right so this is also 0 now how many non zero rows are there there are only three non zero rows so the rank of this matrix equals to 3 look at how i have done everything in a very short space very very quickly okay so because this whole thing became zero right the only there are only three non zero rows so the so the rank of this matrix is 3 so very simple rank computation of rank using this using echelon form by trying to convert to echelon form using using some very simple row operations is super easy Okay, and it all works out because elementary row operations do not change the rank. That's the key takeaway.